Welcome everybody and welcome to Empowerment Point TV. My name's Debbie Small and I'm the founder of Empowerment Point. And welcome to Business Dining with Deb, Business Treats and Takeaways. And today's episode is episode two of Depression and Anxiety in Business. But before we start, oh, I just need to tell you I have a track sheet here. So if I don't have my track sheet, then these, pe these, these friends of mine will be talking all night. So I need to keep us on track of what we're doing. And I have my watch here as well because uh, you guys are uh, saying this through my phone. <laughs> so I have my watch here too. Um, I'd like to first, our sponsor for tonight is the amazing, amazing uh, uh, exclusive chef Thomas Dam from Dam Good, that's D-A-M-M-G-O-O-D. -O -O Hello, here he is. Hello, <laughs> how are we going? Very, very well. So, Chef Thomas is here in Melbourne. <laughs> However, he does travel all over the world and around Australia as well, thank you. No worries. And he does exclusive functions like this, exclusive nights, and he also does huge functions and everything in between as well. So, and the food is absolutely amazing. I have to tell you something. I was actually telling, uh, no telling Chef Thomas earlier that uh, last time in episode one, I actually was going to talk about uh, his food. You know, like a chef does, like it tastes like this, it tastes <laughs> like that. And so, but I couldn't get the words to say what I wanted to say. It was like, it's sweet, it's this. And then I had to think about it and I realized the reason I couldn't get the words out is because Chef Thomas's food is more, you taste it, but then you feel it. It creates an emotion. It's like emotive food. So guys, I tell you, you need to try his cooking and, and really go through that dining experience because it's wow. So thank you. I love you like it. I love it. Smell, it smells incredible. It is say, incredible, you, isn't it? You, I only wish you all had some sort of like smell of vision. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. We, we will though. Um, we didn't do this last time. We're going to do it this time. There's going to be photos of the food. So I've gotten Chef Thomas to actually take photos before he brings them out. And if there's some experience like there was in, uh, in an, um, episode one, sorry, then I'm actually going to take a video of it. So you get the video and the pictures in the after shots as well. So that'll be there too. Um, now I just need to thank Lisa as well, uh, who is doing our back end. So any of you want to ask questions or comments, please write your comments down, write your questions down. And uh, throughout it, I'm gonna ask Lisa about any comments. But at the end, I'm actually gonna go through the list of questions and we're gonna answer your questions live. So please make sure that you guys post your questions. Um, I just wanted to also tell you why I created Business Dining with Deb, Business Treats and Takeaways. It's a bit of a mouthful. Um, one, I wanted to bring expert information to you in a fun way. So what's more fun than having a dinner party? Mm. <laughs> um, I also love food, so why not mix the two together? <laughs> um, also too, I get to help businesses like Chef Thomas, Melanie Taylor, Eric Chan, give value to you guys too. So that's really, really important for me. And if you guys want to contact any of my guests or Chef Thomas afterwards, please feel free to do that, or even myself too. Please feel free to do that afterwards. Um, now, just to let you know too, my business empowerment point is about ensuring that business owners have strong business foundations in their business, because I think that's really important to be able to grow. And I have created the 10 pillar business foundation roadmap. And one of the pillars is you. <laughs> because without you, nothing else works. Without ourselves, mm -hmm. nothing else works. So I think you is one of the most important things and that's why tonight we're talking about depression and anxiety in business, which I think is really important. Um, I think it's a topic that's vulnerable for a lot of people and even for us. So I really want to thank both Melanie and Eric for sharing their stories tonight because it is quite a vulnerable topic and we're doing it to make a difference and see if we can help people as well. So thank you guys. I really, really appreciate both of you doing that. Yeah, um, as business owners, we, business isn't, some people think business is like this. <laughs> it's totally up and down. And I have, uh, I have uh, clients who tell me that, you know, they go through the ups and downs and the depression and anxiety as well, and they're not normal. And I laugh mm -hmm. because they're yeah. so normal. 
we are all totally normal going through those ups and downs. And that's why I thought tonight would be good so we can talk about different tips and different takeaways and help people realize that, you know, being an entrepreneur is not easy and it comes with its ups and downs as well. And, you know, it's great when you've got like-minded people together because we get each other, which is really, really good. So I just wanted to let you know, and I'm gonna repeat this a few times because there are people who are coming into this live at different times. And also too, there is a replay that you can watch afterwards too, uh, either here or on my YouTube channel, Empowerment Point TV. So I just need to let you all know, um, and I'm gonna do this off here so I don't miss anything. None of us are medical professionals, so that's really important. So if this brings something up for you, please seek medical advice. Uh, or give Lifeline a call on 13 11 14. Or if you're watching from overseas, please Google Lifeline or its equivalent in your town or seek medical advice as well. So that's really important to, to say. So I think it's time to start our dinner party. Yes. <laughs> okay, I want to introduce you to uh, Melanie Taylor over here, Success Mentor, and Eric Chan. It's all right, I do remember your name. That's a great way to start it. <laughs> I had some things happen beforehand and I was going a bit crazy. So we're starting well. It's all live. Yeah. Nothing gets cut. That's good. That's good. Eric Chan, communication strategist. Yes. So I do know who you are. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So firstly, Melanie, can you tell us what is a success mentor and what made you decide to do that? Thank you, Deb. That's all right. <laughs> Thanks for this. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for this beautiful opportunity tonight. I'm very excited. Uh, success. Well, a success mentor um, really is about identifying what success means to you. I like that. Yeah, because um, for me, I thought success was, uh, I suppose, being the best version of myself, um, being well educated, going to university, getting a job, and then you know increasing in that job to get more experience and you know be there to serve people. Uh, what I realised, I was on that journey of working as a nurse, and I was working as a palliative care nurse, so uh, mm -hmm. in oncology. So I was working with people that were dying, and and had very much that success model, um, and doing wonderful things, you know, building great businesses. Um, but what I realised is that in those levels of success that it was quite destructive to our bodies. Wow. Causing a lot of stress, causing a lot of anxiety, um, and then what I saw was a lot of disease as well. So, um, and meanwhile, I was watching people on that journey that were dying, and I was actually going through that journey myself. Mm. A very high achiever, <laughs> studying, <laughs> doing, <laughs> yes. um, doing post-grads at Melbourne University, um, ended up ducks in the class, do wonderful things. Uh, meanwhile, I broke my, my wrist, you know, during it. So um, I used to do life the hard way. Like I, I was quite addicted to stress, love stress. And what I realized is that- A lot of people are. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I loved it. I loved the adrenaline, loved the high, loved being busy. Um, and then what I realized is if I continue down that road, then I might get sick or possibly be dead. And so thankfully during that time, I broke my wrist and that was the greatest gift that the universe ever gave me because I realized that I had to change my way of being. And so, long story <laughs> short, but I was standing up there receiving the Order of Malta Award, massive big deal at Melbourne University. And I went, wow, I think this is a big deal because I was very much tick next tick you know so i would a lot never of like that yeah i would never enjoy the experience yeah. and i was, just had a moment i thought wow this is huge um i spoke after this guy he had a um 20 250 million dollar water bill and then little old me gets up the nurse accepting my award and i was like oh, this is you know this is a, this is a big <laughs> deal and then a little bit after that i just realized that i was really hard on myself i was my worst critic i was you know, never worry about other people judging you. I was my biggest judge. And I just realized that if I could achieve this with so much force, fear, yeah. a lot of self-hatred really, like just pushing myself to be better and better, mm. then I decided that I would flip that and achieve. So my level of success became achieving and self-love. That's pretty cool. So from that moment, this took me on this beautiful journey to be teaching others. Yeah, how to helping others. achieve in self-love. 
which raises you to an abundant vibration mm. where then you actually have everything you really want, but you're actually able to enjoy the process. I like that. I like that. And we're going to talk about a lot of that mm. more too. So thank you for that. Eric, so I do remember your name. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> Um, tell us, what is a communication strategist and why you decided to become one? And I know that because um, when you first hear communication strategist, you might think the, well, I guess it is the technology, but in a different way. You think the technology part, but yeah, tell us uh, from you, what's a communication strategist, what you do? Yeah, look, uh, when you first asked me to put the title of what it is that I do, I did struggle a little bit because my journey has been one of um, about presentation and speaking and sharing stories um, from the heart and inspiring others. And then of course, you know, on the commercial side, I made it into a business about developing business pitches and things that can help, you know, generate business. So this tying of like the creative and the commercial aspect. But I guess the way that I view communication, if not strategist, is I believe that when it comes to what makes us great as human beings is our ability to speak. It really is because our ability to speak and to articulate ourselves allows us to turn a mere thought, a dream into reality. Because if you can articulate it, then you can plan it. And if you can plan it, you can build it. And if you can build it, you can create whatever you want. And people who are really good at speaking their truth, speaking um, their experience, their expertise, seem to always create as they walk around, right? When they speak their truth, they inspire. So that also comes in regards to speaking your truth, as well as I, I think for a lot of for some people, it's speak for some people speaking, and other people, it's also writing their truth yes, as well. Yes, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Because mm -hmm. when you write, you're forming, you're basically speaking internally to get yeah, the yeah. Um, words down onto paper, right? Yeah. And I feel that there's that creative aspect, and I feel that the individuals that I've met in my life who are really good at communication, like true communication, not just monologuing. Um, tend to be the best listeners as well. So when you, when I think about communication strategies, maybe it's a, a term that I've used incorrectly, but this is how I feel about what it is that I've applied my life to. And, and everything that has come my way that has been positive mm -hmm. has been as a result of, um, I guess, seeing communication from this perspective. Communication is so important and you're right, it creates energy, it, cre it creates creativity. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that. Um, I wanted to, these guys are going to be really vulnerable with you tonight and really share their stories. So I kind of thought that it was only fair that I share part of my story as well, um, as vulnerable as it is. Um, I was in a really bad relationship years ago and I lost myself. I lost who I was. I became a yes person. I was terrified to even uh, say what I felt in front of my friends as well. I, I didn't disagree with any of them at all. And I even had at one stage, I had um, two of my friends calling each other saying, do we need to step in here? Do we need to do something here? Because this is just not right. Um, and I went through, I went through traumatic shocks. So I went through post-traumatic shock, but I didn't actually know that I was suffering with it till about two and a half years into it. And someone said to me, you know, you're suffering post-traumatic shock. And I've gone, oh my God, it makes sense now. Because I spent a lot of time in a daze. And the only time that I was ever my true self, funny enough, was when I was training in a training group. And then I was just me. But then when I went out on a break, I was in a daze again. So I had to, I'm quite introspective and I had to try to find me again as well. And the analogy I put to uh, post-traumatic shock or to shock is just say that you're, you come home after work and you drive into your street and you come home and your house isn't there and you're kind of along the right street and you look around and you're in the right street but there's just a block of land with really long grass and you're like okay this is really weird. So then you see your neighbour and you go John um, what happened to my house and John looks at you and says Sorry, I don't know who you are. I've never met you before. There hasn't been a house here for over 30 years. And you're just sitting there going, what? Like, and it just doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And your brain just can't comprehend it. So that's the, and you go into shock. And that's the analogy that I use. 
So I spent time, um, I didn't want to get, a, uh, get out of bed at times. I didn't want to get out of, get off the couch. Um, friends would ask me out and I would say yes and then I would, it would come to Friday, Saturday night or whatever and I'd get dressed and then I would have an anxiety attack and I just could not go out and I would call a friend of mine and as I was on the phone I would um, change into my pyjamas, felt good, <laughs> and end up staying home. And you know, I hadn't been through that and I've never had a clinical depression or clinical anxiety um, at all. And uh, I think I finally realized that, you know, we all go through stuff. We go through different things and, you know, we all go through, whether it be small bouts or larger bouts of depression and anxiety, um, and that I was totally normal. Oh, we've got entree. I'm gonna stop for just a moment. What have we got here? Whoa, something delicious, barbecued and 24 hours. Oh, no, cooked. main meal, sorry. Yep, and, uh, and slow cooked uh, lamb shoulder. Oh, wow. With pork polenta, smoked yogurt, and a little herb salt. Wow. This it, looks beautiful. Just, uh, Can you take a photo of that? Smoked? Yeah, I will. I will make a plate there. I will take a, take a picture of that. Just, uh, now, I'm just going to take a video of, of Eric pulling the video for you afterwards. So, I'll just do this. Yeah. I'm, I'm so excited. <laughs> it smells amazing. Hold on, let me and just. And it's got that theatre that's just <laughs> so cool. Mm -hmm. Could I go? Yes, you can go. <laughs> mm. That actually does look amazing as well. So now I'm just going to go over to Mel so she can do hers. Right. Everyone's in awe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that is the beautiful, beautiful main mm. meal by Chef Thomas Dam. It's all about dining with all your senses, huh? Mm. Yeah, amazing. Oh, absolutely. Sorry, guys, I know that seems really weird <laughs> that I actually took that video, but last time people kept asking me, what did it look like? What did the food look like? And, and when you took the glass off, where, what did it look like? So I wanted to be able to post that for you afterwards. So you get it real. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Should my turn. As well. <laughs> oh, that is so cool. That smells incredible. It reminds me of camp days. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. No worries. Please enjoy. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thanks. Um, so I was just saying how, um, yeah, I just wanted to say too that because I'm quite introspective, I started researching when I found out that's, that I had post-traumatic shock, I started researching, I started reading books, I started watching videos and doing all this stuff to try to get myself out of it as well. So it was quite, quite interesting. So I think that's why I say that in life. Any business, you need persistence and a great sense of humor because we do <laughs> in lots and lots of different ways. So for me, um, so this has been, and, and I, I talked about vulnerability before. This is the first time I've actually shared my story um, so publicly. So um, I just want to to say that you know stepping out of your comfort zone is is. Um, for me, it's important because if we if we help one person, then it's worth it's worth what we're doing tonight. Yeah. So yeah, so thank you guys for all allowing us to do this tonight too. No, well done, though, because I've known you for a few years now, and I don't think I've heard about that part of your story. Like you mentioned that you know you've gone through stuff, but I've never heard it to that detail. So that was quite amazing no. for me as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, definitely what you said about having a sense of humour. Oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> terminal seriousness <laughs> that a mentor once shared with me. We've got to definitely try to get rid of terminal seriousness. Definitely, definitely. You know, yeah, life is about having a sense of humour. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, Mel, Please share with us your story. My story? Yeah. Well. Shall we? Shall we? Yeah, please do. You can enjoy it while I share my story. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my story. Um, where will I begin? Hi, everyone. Yeah. Um, I was, as I said, um, have always been a very high achiever. And I suppose, you know, very traditional upbringing, very grateful, beautiful family, come to the country in Ballarat. Um, 
My mum's got a quite, you know, brought up Catholic, quite big family. My mum's one of ten. And so you're Australian ethnicity? Yes, 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 yes. And brought up, you know, to give, to be givers. And so, um, you know, it's a beautiful thing. And then um, took on what I call the nurse role as a young child. I loved helping people, giving, being a carer. And that went on. You so still love helping people. <laughs> 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 still helping people. <laughs> and that went on and on. And then I became um, a nurse. So I actually got paid for that role. And I loved it. I worked in quite challenging areas. So I worked in oncology and palliative care for 20 years. So uh, very privileged, you know, I'd go and look after people at home and help them die and comfortably and wherever they wanted to be. And it was, it was absolutely amazing. Um, but with this giving role that I had, and I gave so much, is, and then what I realised when I broke my wrist, burn out. I was burning out all the time, and I didn't know how to receive. I couldn't receive a compliment. I couldn't, you know, I just really struggled to receive. There are quite a few people out there, and I know some people too, who struggle to receive. And mm -hmm. I have um, a friend of mine who I'd say to her, just say thank you. Yeah. When, when she'd get a compliment, she would hate it, and i go, just say thank yeah. you. <laughs> It's like, why would you deprive the person as well of that contribution to your life? Oh, yeah, yeah I guess like so. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Did, um, did you actively choose to go into oncology and palliative care, or is that something that, like... I would say not actively. <clears throat> so I've, I've done a lot of my work on myself since 2011, after I broke my wrist, getting into my subconscious mind. And i always wondered why i was i was always so driven to oncology and i knew i was going to be a nurse my dad actually had a bad car accident when i was six and the nurses were really beautiful so i think from then i decided i wanted to be a nurse and then when i was in year 12 i went to i remember going to the royal melbourne and doing this course in oncology and i thought why well, i was just so driven i thought why do i want to be you know do oncology and anyway i went down that line and then when i started doing all this subconscious work on myself I realised that when I was six, um, one of my friends at school, she had brain cancer. Oh, wow. Um, and she actually died. And I didn't realise the impact that that had, uh, that had on me. Right. And so that was subconsciously driving me to do oncology. So so what led you towards depression and anxiety going through that? My own experience. <laughs> yeah, hugely. Because I, was, I didn't know how to receive. So I was burning out all the time. Right, right. So I'd give, give, give to people. And I had a lot of limiting beliefs. And I would give and I couldn't receive because I didn't think I was worthy, didn't think I was good enough, didn't think I deserved uh, a compliment really. It's like that imposter syndrome, a mm. lot of people don't think they're worthy enough mm. when they are very worthy mm. in so many ways. Mm. So I had a cycle in life where I was just up and down, up and down and just, I just burn out all the time. And um, and like there's a lot of depression and anxiety in our family as well, and yeah. especially down my dad's side. And uh, lots of anxiety. My whole life I had anxiety. I had a sick feeling in my stomach. Um, just fear of being seen. Lots of limiting beliefs. Um, hated public speaking. Would rather be seen and not heard. <laughs> just sit in the back. Um, and then I suppose there came a time where that pain was so bad that I just I had to do something about it. And um, my beautiful dad actually taught me. I think I was about 15 and he said, um, you're, you're like me. And he was right, because we're very deep feelers, we're empaths, empaths. So when you're an empath, you feel a lot of fear. Um, and I got addicted to fear at a very young age, and you know, things went on. Um, we're going to talk more about that too, because addiction to fear is really normal, and it can happen quite easily. Mm. And so, yeah, just this up and down cycle all the time. And yeah, then I'd get, you know, work so hard, get sick, didn't know how to look after myself. I was incredibly busy all the time. I had a hundred million things on the go. Dry, diary always full, very social. Um, and then as I said about, you know, the, the anxiety as well. And probably, I think I was quite depressed and, but no one would have really known. I mm. up, I always had a smile on my face and I wouldn't be vulnerable, you know, probably some of my friends, would, my closest friends would have known, but you know, we didn't talk about it. And I also thought that I was quite strange. Um, <laughs> I thought I was abnormal. Because <laughs> um, all my I used to worry just, about things. I'm laughing because I think we're all strange. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To even do this is a bit strange. You know, right? yeah, yeah, you've got to be, you've got to be straight. Why, why not be strange? You know, why be like everybody else? 
That's right. And because my friends used to say, I used to worry about things all the time, worry about people. And my friends would say, what are you worrying for? Oh, it's everything. Oh, Beautiful. delicious. Thank Absolutely you. delicious. Mm -hmm. nice. Thank you. Fantastic. Enjoy it. Really, really good. Thank you. Easy. Wow. <laughs> it's so good. It's like mm. this meat and everything makes it feel so fresh. <laughs> it's not like heavy. Mm, cool. It's, it's beautiful. So it is. Thanks for that, Mel. Yeah, what so is? that's what I was saying. I loved, loved to worry um, and just addicted to stress and had lots of bouts of anxiety and depression. But I have a stubborn in me as well, which is very powerful as an entrepreneur. So I was too stubborn. I never took medication or anything. and. Um, anyway, it led me on this beautiful journey, and now I understand anxiety and depression. It's actually really. It means that you're growing, and then a part of you needs to die, and you need to go through these emotions. So I, you know, I study metaphysics now, and I've, I do so much work. Um, so it's it's yeah, it's it's actually a really good thing. But you get taught growing up that it's bad. Don't be angry. Don't show your emotions. Don't be depressed. But it's actually a part of the cell cycle. It's called apoptosis, so we need that for death to happen. Isn't that interesting? Mm. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Really interesting. Mm. Um, Eric, can you tell us your story with depression and anxiety? Yeah, so um, I really wanted to be a part of this because I feel like I bring uh, another perspective to depression and anxiety because I definitely didn't um, suffer any depression anxiety when I was growing up uh, even though my parents were divorced when I was quite young I was the lucky one I saw my dad every week um, mm. you know I was always treated well I was without wants and need we weren't um, wealthy at all but I was never without wants and need and I lived a really good life I went to Catholic school and all these different things that I know um, some people would not even be able to have uh, even a little bit so I've been very fortunate but where my depression anxiety came into was actually um, very recently, to be honest with you, through this mm -hmm. entrepreneurial journey. And mm -hmm. I wanted to um, be part of this uh, conversation because when you think about what it means to be a business owner, to even be crazy enough to delve into entrepreneurship, is that people who go into entrepreneurship have very high levels of what, are, what people call intrinsic resilience, right? Internally, is that stubbornness, is that ability to work through things and mm -hmm. this whole up and down certainty with uh, when you know sales are really good, for example, business is going well, and uncertainty when things look slow, we go through that roller coaster all the time. We definitely don't live with certainty. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we like to sit on that edge and just hold on for dear life, like a like a roller coaster, <laughs> and that, that thrill. Like right? a crazy person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so and, we are right. <laughs> so I, I think um, doing that actually, <laughs> doing that actually. Um, makes it harder for us to see when it actually is something serious or something that's really affecting you because you're just like maybe this is a low time or oh but i need to be more resilient than that right and, and i feel also as an entrepreneur owner we delve so much into personal development which I in my early 20s because i became a dad at a very young age number one like at 26 i've got a seven year old now as a 32 year old oh, yeah beautiful. which is beautiful and also um wanting to resolve uh, some of the issues between me and my parents, right? Because of the divorce and all that. Mm. So I learned all these tools and I know them really well. And I'm an expert at teaching other people and pointing out their problems and how to solve their issues. <laughs> but then for myself. But we're, a lot of us are like that. Yeah. And a lot of entrepreneurs are like that. You know, we're really great at helping others. Mm. But when it comes to helping ourselves, you know, it's a bit of a different story. Yeah. But you know, we can we can get the best out of someone else yeah. and we can do that for someone else. But it's really important and I think that's why I brought us all together tonight too, that we do it for ourselves. Mm. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, that's a really good point. You really have to mm. do it for yourself. You actually have to take a step back and look at what's going on because that voice in your head, whether it be ego, whether it be fear, whatever you choose to categorize mm. it as it tries to convince you that there's some sort of nuance to your situation mm. where the universal um, principles and tools do not apply to you, right? Like somehow you imagine that, no, but my situation is special and no, I know these tools and, and you can't recognize it for yourself. Mm. So what happened to me was, is that I was in a really great business partnership for the last um, two years. I started feeling that there was something wrong, almost like a little scratch in the back of your brain, mm. right? And you don't know what that is. And you start behaving in ways where you just barely take notice of what's going on. 
and then you have people who come into your life and they are like a mirror to you and I had a friend her name is uh, Jenny Junk here who uh, I share an office with uh, at Warner's Business Center and she goes Eric I want to talk to you I want to say something to you do you mind and I go no no we're at alone in the office in the evening at night she goes Eric I know how amazing you are etc etc but why is it that you walk around like you suppress yourself your body language you look like you're uncertain and I was completely unaware of it mm. but the link between that little scratch in the back of my brain made me um, realize that there was something wrong mm. and it was this moment of recognition from someone who's so used to seeing ups and downs certainty and uncertainty got to be resilient got to be vulnerable because I'm a stage speaker so objectively I'm so good at being vulnerable in front of like a hundred you know 500 people and people give you this applause but part of my journey has been a lesson of you know what sometimes we hide behind that objective praise and doing things that are hard and, and that actually protects our ego so that we can keep going down this path and not actually resolve what really needs to be resolved and then these things open up more and more Pandora's boxes in the brain and what happened to me was that I, from the normal thing where I go and challenge myself or do something that um, that stretched the adversity in my life and I'll get some epiphany and I'm like yep I'm sweet I've evolved and I've learned it this time around <laughs> this time around when it was real you know depression and anxiety and that lost sense of identity fifth epiphany open up a bigger question tenth epiphany open up an even bigger question and the cloud just got heavier and heavier and heavier to the point where I lost complete faith in myself even so in my you totally life, lost yourself lost myself completely it was so bad like you've known me since um day that I started business really at the business marketplace well you said your daughter's seven mm. so that means I've known you for about seven or eight years I think eight years or seven and a half years has it well you know? I, I remember you having a baby mm. No, it definitely wouldn't have been 2012. No? Was it? no, no, not yet. I think we were going, we we're about to have a baby when I left, perhaps. Okay, well, yeah, because uh, because I've only been in business for like four, four years, okay. and two years, seriously. But what happened was, um, uh, where was I? I can't remember what I said. Oh, no, you know me from so, the beginning, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, so you know that I've been a speaker, confident, and all that. And I had a moment where I was in a round table where we were asked to pitch, which was my thing. I used to be called the pitch specialist. That was my moniker beforehand. I did the pitch and then the facilitator had this interesting facilitation method where they make the person who just pitch sit in a chair facing away from the entire group and then the entire group would give feedback and talk about the pitch and all that. And there was a person who was, uh, you know, deals with venture capitalists and investments and gives a lot of pitches and he's like, wow, you did an amazing job. I wish all pitch was like that. And I started tearing up because I had thought that I had no ability even in the core thing that made me who I am and I lost that completely and, and it was such a surprise to me because I couldn't recognize what was happening to me and, and it got to the point where yeah it's just the worst thing ever <laughs> you, you don't recognize it at the time I didn't recognize it for two and a half years mm. until someone pointed it out to me because I'd never been through something like that before yeah. I didn't know what that was like um, I knew I had lost myself um, but I, I didn't know that I was suffering post-traumatic shock. Mm. I didn't know that, I didn't even know something like that existed. So, you know, we, we don't unless I think a lot of the time someone points it out to us as well. Mm. And how fortunate were both you and I to have people in our lives that were um, vulnerable enough, courageous enough, brave enough to have that conversation because you know, that, that's quite a confronting conversation to say, hey, I think there's something going on with you that might actually be wrong or negative or whatever you want to frame it as. And for my friend Jenny to come to me and say that, hey, you look like you uh, are suppressing yourself and completely uncertain. And, and the funny thing is when she said that, I mean, that little eager voice in my head was like, eh, what the hell do you know? You know, like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. See, when I was told that, I turned around and went, oh my God. I said, now it makes sense because suddenly everything made sense because now I know what I'm going through. Like I had no idea I was even going through something. It was like, it makes sense, Yeah. which was pretty uh, incredible as well, which is good to know. Yeah. It's, it's so beautiful to have those people in your life. True. Yeah. Very yeah. true. Um, now you wanted to share the science behind depression and anxiety. Yes. Um, so basically, uh, we're on a hero's quest. You spoke about it earlier, mm. Eric. Um, and so we have what's called duality. <laughs> we have ups and downs in life. And 
we don't know, uh, we need the, the, the polarisation, so we need the negative and the positive. Um, and we need the sadness to know what happiness feels like. Yin and yang. <laughs> but we have this syndrome in society called happiness, where we're supposed to just be happy all the time. Um, but the only way we can have more levels of happiness is actually to go through experiences of sadness. So I just thought of something like one of the one of the um, statements that I've always hated, and I'll tell you why I hate it. But is that most successful people have had to go through crap to get to where they are, and I've hated it because I hate the people who have to go through crap. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I guess from what you're just saying too, you know, to go through the crap, the opposite of that is success. Mm. Yeah, I believe that I'm too. I'm glad we did this tonight. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I actually think that. Um, going off your point is when people try to deny that shadow aspect of yourself like uh, I love stories you know mm. I, I love I, I love the Jungian per perspective on it you know the story starting the archetypes but when you think about the movies you know that light and dark side of the force like Star Wars is coming out mm. and I'm personally a Star Wars fan but they need each other and people try to deny one part and think that mm. there is one part to be mm. <laughs> and, and, and like I, and I don't know about your experience but sometimes yeah. I feel like the individuals in my life are all you know positive vibes everything's positive vibes mm. when they crash they seem to crash the hardest that's they, because it, positive vibes positive vibes they don't they, they they're all here mm. they don't allow themselves to be human and be over here as well mm. yeah that, mm. I see that so it's incredibly important um, and also especially I mean for everybody but especially when you're an entrepreneur you're you're pushing yourself out of your comfort zone so you're going <laughs> yes. to new heights um, and then as you experience that you come up limiting belief you come up against limiting belief systems so your brain goes into a stress response and says no it's not safe to go there so for instance I'm not good enough so I've had a lot of that that I've worked through and so as you go to go to, um, to, I don't know, take a step towards something, well, your brain will pull you back and say, no, it's not safe, you're not good enough. So as you start to take actions and things and work on the subconscious mind, you actually start to make new neural nets in the brain and you formulate, I am good enough. Things start to happen, you actually show yourself that. And so this starts to build, but what has to happen is this old one has to die. Mm -hmm. And the way that dies is through a grief cycle. And we have to grieve for those old parts of ourselves. We have to go through shock. Mm. We have to go through anxiety. <laughs> we have to go through anger. That's really, really important. Uh, depression uh, and then acceptance. So it's called apoptosis. The cell dies and then the new cell. So we're always going through birth, life and death. Wow. So you want to always be going on those cycles. So if you're not, then you're not taking yourself to new heights. Um, and it's neuroplasticity, it's changing the brain. Um, and so you have to grieve um, for those through that process. Then. That's really interesting. Um, I do want to add to that, but just before I do add to that, I just want to, and I've said in the beginning, but I know some people are coming in to the live a bit later as well. So I just want to let you guys know that the three of us are not medical professionals. And if this does bring up things for you, please do seek medical advice or you can call Lifeline on 13 11 14. And if you are outside of Australia, uh, you can Google Lifeline or an equivalent of Lifeline in your town or seek medical um, advice as well. So I just wanna make sure that everyone knows that and that we are not coming from a medical professional um, point of view. We're actually coming from our own experiences. That's that's the point of view we're coming across. Mm. Um, I did want to say when we were talk, you were talking before, and you spoke about this as well um, last time we had a chat in regards to the resistance emotions and how the ego creates fear emotions like depression, like anxiety, and what that does is exactly what you were saying: is it holds us in our comfort zone or what I like to call our stuck zone. And it stops the creativity, that energy of creativity. Hmm. So, yeah, depression is actually saying that something doesn't serve anymore. And it always leads to a limiting belief. That it's such an interesting way to look at it. Yeah, that, that's so true. Because, I um, like that. Mm. Can you repeat that, please? What did I say? <laughs> I'm sort of channeling it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's okay. That's all right. Um, where depression is 
depression is not depression when you're depressed about something well i'll just paraphrase when you're yeah. depressed about something that something is not needed in your life anymore yeah mm. that's a viewpoint you have about yourself that no longer serves wow i was so depressed because i had riddled with limiting beliefs i'm not good enough i'm not worthy not safe to be seen i don't deserve and none of those who served you at all no so my body's going i'll give you depression that's not true <laughs> but yeah. society say it's wrong and you have to have a tablet and, and all this sort of stuff and you know and tablets are good too because sometimes we need them but i was you know my stubborn and i just knew that i had to um well the pain just got too much for me that i had to change so it's a good thing pain because what happens is your ego actually surrenders to your higher self and your higher self starts to take over some people are scared to or they won't go through the pain um, and I realized that, you know, I would be in the car and suddenly I'd start crying and I'd go, mm. just cry. You know, it wasn't like, um, why am I crying? Why am I doing this? Why am I feeling this? Mm. You know, who cares? Just cry, just feel it. Mm. And I think if we allow ourselves to go through the emotion, then we can deal with it in a better way. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it's so amazing that you said, or you framed it in the way that you framed it. Um, you know, I haven't met Melanie in person mm. before. We had a brief conversation leading up to this, mm. but the way that you framed it was exactly the experience or the epiphany I had around um, the depression anxiety I felt during that period. Mm. And now that I've come out the other end, was that in a way the depression, though definitely a negative thing, I felt that it was sort of like um, the universe or my internal self telling me that, hey, you, you stop listening to that higher being or that mm. real authentic mm. version of yourself. So I keep throwing this stuff at you, causing you pain. Like mm. if you're putting your hand over a flame, it burns and it hurts so that you'll move away. But people get, you know, these limiting things. And just tries to keep you there and you don't want to move away from that space. Stuck zone. Yeah, in that stuck yeah, zone, exactly yeah, right. Yes. Um, but it, it dawned on me that maybe it was just a vehicle to actually getting to where I really want to go, that there is actually some in a in a weird way a benefit okay <laughs> well, benefit. you <laughs> you 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 and myself wouldn't be doing the stuff we're doing or looking at doing the stuff we're doing for even next year if we hadn't gone through this mm. anxiety is yeah. my greatest gift wow ever yeah how many people absolutely would say that? it's you know it's funny going into this I never saw them or these things as, as gifts or as, you know, things that don't serve you. So I have to say, I'm really glad that we did this tonight because like I've gotten already aware, we, we still haven't finished and I've gotten so much out of it already. And it's, it's seeing things from that different perspective mm. that really changes. Um, it changes that avenue out of the stuck zone mm. Mm. and out of your comfort zone. And do the things that you want to do and, you know, be who you want to be and, you know, and who things happen. It's like, you know, even me organizing um, a dinner party and having you guys speak, you know, things could happen. The first one we did, there were a few technical issues, um, you know, things happen. But if I don't try, I'll never know. Mm. And what's the worst that can happen? That's right. Might be amazing. Might be amazing. <laughs> and, and funny enough, in my story, um, it wasn't until I surrendered to it, um, took action and made that change to help alleviate the, um, the blockage, right? The depre what the depression and anxiety was telling me to, to shift away from, that new opportunities came that would never have come, right? So mm -hmm. one of them was a, a, a new uh, job opportunity or position opportunity. And before I made the decision to leave my partnership, this person would never offer that for me because he knew my business partner and he would never step on um, his toes to try to poach me or anything like that. He would mm. never do that. But it wasn't until I stepped into my own power that these new things came. So mm. there's this learning from you trying to make sense of what you should do with the information and data that you have in your brain right now. But you also got to remember that once you make that change and that leap of faith and you tune into that higher being, that there will be all this new information and data that comes and forms a new picture. And when you talk about that, that death, you know, that mm. grief cycle and rebirth, mm. um, I, my brain always, again, goes back to stories. And it, it, it always brings me back to why, for example, why is Harry Potter so, so, um, so um, 
loved, beloved, right? Why are people so into it? Mm. And I remember because I'm reading the books with my daughter right now, and I'm mm. deep into it. Right. Deep into it, and I know that the second, the first book is like the hero's journey, right? But the yeah. second book is about the phoenix. You know, at the end where Harry gets poisoned and the phoenix tears heals him, and the phoenix is about death and rebirth. And mm. when I look at this situation, I think about this conversation that we have is that. Sometimes we need to burn to dust in order to grow and become something more. Well, that's what seems to be happening. And that's, you know, as you were talking, the rebirth as well. You know, in business, all of this is just a normal part of life. Yeah. And we don't realise it until, you know, we have conversations like this. Then we actually realise more and more how normal it is to go through all these. And we don't delete it we don't alleviate it or not alleviate the wrong word we don't delete it or we don't not go through it we learn to manage it with different tools so i want to talk about what are the different tools you guys have learned to to manage um, anxiety and uh, and depression with and just before i talk about the tools that people use to cope i just want to mention one thing one of the things that people think they need to do in what they do is they need to be perfect yeah. it's got to be perfect it's got to be perfect what is perfect you know I did a talk about this a while ago and perfection is really subjective it's like art some people hate it some people don't hate it you know people are going to love it people are going to hate it is how it is but with what I think is perfect you guys may not yeah. and what you guys think is perfect I may not and what we all think is perfect at this moment, in a week's time, we may change our mind because within that week, we've all had different experiences. Mm. So our experiences really are about, well, our experiences kind of determine what we think is perfect or how perfect something should be. Mm. So as business people, it's, it's, we need to stop trying to be perfect because it means our work doesn't get out and things don't happen yeah. and you know i wouldn't be sitting here with you guys today so it's about getting your work out it's about you know seeing uh, what it was like making those changes because as we evolve so does our work mm -hmm. and the things that we do as well so yeah perfection doesn't exist mm -hmm. is what i say which is really really important so tell me oh Thank you. You and finished? Are you? Yes. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. That was delicious. Thank yeah. you, Chef Thomas. It was really good. Yeah, it was beautiful. Glad you liked it. Loved it. Yes. Loved it. It was really fresh, which was really good. Like surprising, you know, when you eat a lot of meat, but it was very fresh with the mm. ingredient choices. Yeah, well, this time of the year, that you don't want to eat something and then feel completely full or tired <laughs> after after the dinner, right? Yeah, that's right. right. <laughs> he does the perfect menu. <laughs> yeah, it was really good, and I'm, and I'm not just blowing smoke. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, did, I did have a comment about the fish. Actually, I was wondering, Melanie, what are your thoughts about what? Uh, Perfect. Yeah, perfect. I am perfectly imperfect. Perfectly imperfect. It took me a long time because <laughs> I had a lot of perfectionism. That was my cover photo. Said oh, that. really? When I first started the Empowerment Point um, business uh, Facebook page. Mm. Yeah, go on. Yeah, because I had a lot of... Because perfection comes from a limiting belief. I don't trust myself. Mm. And we don't trust ourselves because we're not connected to our higher self. And then the more you become connected, then you know there's no such thing as perfection. Because you become in service. That's why I always trust whatever comes out of my mouth now. I don't plan things anymore. Because then it hits the mark of whatever people need to hear. So you tap into the collective consciousness, you know, to the universe. So it's it's a beautiful thing. But you have to perfect. It's okay to be perfect for a while because it's that's what leads you to find these limiting beliefs and things like that. Mm. It's um it's quite quite interesting I have to say, um one of the one of the tools that we were talking about one of the things that we were talking about is getting uncomfortable, um with uh, getting good at becoming uncomfortable getting good with being uncomfortable. Mm. Yeah. What would you like to say about that? I, could... I was actually talking to a friend today on the phone, and she said, "Mel, you're the only person I know that loves getting uncomfortable." <laughs> Um, I do because that's when you find more parts of yourself you didn't know were there. Like for you, you like organizing this, like 
clearly it's amazing. I'm having a ball. Thank you so Thank much. You. That's my pleasure. <laughs> but if you don't hop out of that comfort zone, you don't get into that beautiful creative energy. You don't create new possibilities. And then you get to yeah. be proud of yourself and it's mm. more self-love because you go, I'm doing stuff now. I would never, I didn't even like public speaking. I'm public speaking. I'm doing events, um, you know, all over Australia. And I take that leap of faith because I, I never know how it's going to work out. So I'm like, okay, let's just do this. And then it works out. And then you touch people's lives and you just go, oh my God, people, I'm so happy I did that. And so, it, yeah, it just brings you to new levels. It's like little hero's journeys in itself, right? When you put yourself through a challenge, it doesn't yeah. always have to be this huge macro thing, these little challenges. Mm. Are, um, of uh, uncomfortability that you mm. decide to put yourself through mm. gives you that sense of achievement and growth in just the smallest mm. amount. It doesn't have to be something big. It can be something small. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. That's like you know, last the, the two weeks ago we did episode one, and afterwards the guys are like, okay, let's celebrate. And I went because I never usually celebrate anything. Like mm. I always go, yeah, we'll do it later. We'll do it later. And I've just gone. We've just done episode one here. We're going to we're gonna open a bottle of wine and we're going to celebrate. You know, I need to do this. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And, you know, I tell people, celebrate the wins. Celebrate the small wins, the big wins. And, you know, finally I took my own advice and, and did the same thing. And you were talking about the, the ripple effect on my uh, Facebook group. I've now put a photo mm -hmm. on the cover photo and also I use them for the hashtags uh, days, uh, a ripple, because... Everything we, and I've put, what you do matters because, you know, what we do does matter. Mm -hmm. We may not realise it, we may not see it. Oh my God, I spoke to a friend of mine today who was actually telling me this of how the things that we do actually matter. And if she's watching, hello. <laughs> um, but it does, it, it actually makes a difference what we do and we don't always realise it and we don't know the impact that we actually have. Yeah, um, even as you're saying this, I, I realise I've been a bit guilty of not celebrating the wins because as you shared that with me, the thought came to me, a memory came to me actually, where when I first um, made my first $50, that was purely me, not, not off because I was working for some company mm. or, or the mm. university I was working with or anything like that, my first $50. And I distinctly remember, wow, when I um, build a successful business or I'm no longer working at Monash uh, and I am get to you know, work out at a cafe or something like that, I'm going to sure. take photos yeah. and celebrate that and that would be an achievement, right? And then that came and, and then I was thinking, oh, now I need to have this successful business and then that came and I didn't celebrate that either and even today, like, I no, just I'm, haven't... No, I'm fine, thanks, man. I haven't done it at all. <laughs> so you sort of pulled me up and I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> just like being in this moment and having this conversation and, and trying to, um, you know, ignite a conversation, I'm guilty of that right in this moment time to celebrate the small things yeah. as well um we also talked about you know and business owners need to realize and understand that and we do too the business comes with certainty and uncertainty yes so what 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 i don't know if the, the only thing oh, 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 <laughs> oh i would say is there any certainty the only thing <laughs> the only certainty <laughs> right. is in yourself or death and taxes <laughs> yeah. No, but you're right. Yeah. Like, how do you, the balance of certainty and uncertainty in business, there is no certainty. Yeah, no. And this is why there, this is why business is like this. And this is why business owners go through the stuff they go through is because, you know, we do crazy things and we do things that, you know, either something will go right or it won't go right. But if we don't try, we'll never know, mm. which is really important. I actually think, uh, again, when I uh, spoke about what is the greatest thing about being human yeah is that um not just in business but there is no certainty in life we we operate like as if there is but the people in our lives even today i could choke you know on on like something and, and i could die with anything can happen to us anytime but because we are able to live and create and um, love in spite of that is something that we forget and that's what makes life amazing and i think that is often are forgotten because we're so used to looking down right i'm not even just saying about screens but it's just mm -hmm. our lives is always about here right and i've heard the saying before um perhaps a lot of the uh perhaps mental illness or depression anxiety might have something to do with the fact that we can't see the stars because where's the relativity right when i go camping and i can mm -hmm. see the entire universe laid out in front of me i get a i get a relative context of hang on i'm just this small insignificant spec yet so powerful because i can create so much and these things that happen in my life they're not that bad because i've got so much that i can do so much and create 
But when I live, when I walk around here, I'm just like looking down at my screen, thinking about the next project management thing that I got to take care of. And there's and I, so much more. Yeah, and I look up and it's just you know the same color all the time. Sometimes when I walk outside, it's not even dark, right? Like you just lose this sense of relativity between where you are. And uh, I am a big proponent of uh, when you talk about tools, right? Is that go and do something that gives you that relativity, right? Like it, it can be for some people, it's exercise. Right? For me, it's, it's yeah, exercise it and training. Yeah, yeah, exercise and training and pushing myself. I love martial arts and being in that mm. that sort of almost like not fear state, but that um, anticipation state when you're sparring with somebody. That puts me into context. Like, yeah, you know, I'm putting myself in a little bit of danger here on purpose because. I feel alive, you know, for, mm. for some reason. Just don't put yourselves into a lot in of danger, danger. guys. <laughs> <laughs> Not real danger. danger. Yes. This is exercise yeah. danger. <laughs> and my friend, he loves to hike. He loves to go out into the bush even by himself, take a trail that, you know, no one will be able to find him. But he sits there and he sits there alone in the darkness with the fire, um, just looking up at the stars and he gets that sense himself. And my friends, they do creative stuff and they get into this mindset of art and creativity and just mm. cre just building just amazing so, so therefore one of the tools too is really taking self-care taking some time for ourselves because we're so on the go we're, we're working you know we, we go to bed and we're still thinking about joining the dots and the things mm. that we're doing and people think you know some people go to bed straight like I tend to go to bed and I'm joining the dots of different things that I'm doing going, oh yeah, I can do that or I'll do this with that. Um, but I need sleep. So we need to take more care of ourselves as well. Have some time out, take a hike, you know, go exercise, yeah. um, do something that you want to do for you. Take a bath, go to the gym, whatever it may be. Be creative. And do something for you. Yeah, be creative and, as well. And I do think and it's really important to remove that thinking around creativity to fine arts, you know, the traditional sculpting, painting, and all that sort of stuff. That was a big lesson for me. I find um, creativity in just my speaking. I find creativity even in my martial arts because I, you know, put movements together that I come up with on the spot, right? I view creativity differently. And I think. A lot of people don't have creativity in their life. They have um, work or they have uh, direction and, and process. So with, with business, with entrepreneurs though, a lot of the creativity too is within their business. Mm. So they'll come up with new ways of doing things. I know that happens with me. I'll come up with, hello. <laughs> I'll come up with new ways of doing things or I'll um, look at how I can do this or how I can do that. And a lot of creativity is in that as well. Mm. So it's with creativity, it's in different areas or it mm. comes in different ways. As well. mm. um, with, with, uh, with entrepreneurs and business owners, are there ways that we can recognize when too much is too much? Like, step back to actually recognize, you know, we've been working and like we're getting close to burnout and we just too when yeah recognizing when too much is too much well i just think when you you find yourself on like an emotional roller coaster yeah yeah <laughs> um and also you've got to for me i had to shift the limiting belief that you have to work hard that was so in my ancestral dna yeah um because it's not work it's not working if you don't work hard and so what I found is that the less I, I started to pull back and I set quick times now, so when I finish, so I don't work into the evening, now I have all weekends off. And what I find now is that I'm so much more productive, so much more is happening. But because what happens is you just keep yourself in stress response, you keep yourself in scarcity. So what you want to attract, you've actually got walls up going, no, don't come in. So when you be and feel abundant. Work smarter, not harder. Yeah. But it's a big one because I, it would really challenge me a lot because I was so wired that you've got to work hard. Um, so then I had to sit in the uncomfortableness of, right, no, and setting quick times and doing all these things. And then the results started to come through. And I thought, because well, your energy, you have higher energy. So it changes your energy and it changes your creativity as well. Mm. And you've got to enjoy it. Like, life is short. Like what you were saying before, Eric, I know how life short is. How short life is. Mm. I saw patients come in. They were younger than me. They were, you know, a little bit older and they had something going on, like a little tickle in the throat or something. They go off to the doctor. The doctor does some routine bloods. Next thing they're like, oh, you've got leukemia. Pack your bags. And they're in wow. hospital for a year. Just like that. Self-care. We need to take care mm. of ourselves. So what personal development can people look at doing as well? How do you feel about personal development? 
Love it. <laughs> I eat it for breakfast, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> lunch and dinner. As I love to know myself more. Yeah. I've been, um, I've, I've had friends, a uh, friend of mine, especially in Sydney as well, like she'll send me different personal development stuff she's been listening to, or I, I mean, I think we also get, um, being in the business that we're in, we hear about a lot of personal development and we see a lot of events for personal development as well. And like you, mm -hmm. I've always loved um, learning more about, learning more about, you know, different ways I can improve more too which I think that's helped me as well. What about yourself? I love personal development. Um, it's been, like I said, my journey since my early 20s. Um, what I'd love to bring to this conversation, because I think we're all in agreement that personal development is wonderful. You should always be reading the books, listening to great podcasts or watching good videos. And I, I do that um, daily. One thing that I would bring to the conversation in order maybe even to throw a little bit of tension in it because of um, it. just a bit of the self-reflection, mm -hmm. especially coming out of um, this depressing and anxious states recently was that a lot of the times I feel people uh, tend to look outside of themselves all the time and continuously go on this journey without giving the moments to look internally for a long period of time for that self-development mm. right? okay. and, and when you ask that question for example um, when is it too much or well, how do you recognize the signs uh, one of the byproducts I've seen for certain people in my life and it has happened to me before was this um, desire to always be authentic right authentic authenticity because a thought came to me and I've only just been exploring this thought and that's why I think it could cause tension is that when you talked about perfection I actually think a lot of people maybe no through fault you know fault of their own sort of match authenticity with perfection Cause really? I, yeah, because I hear people wow. say, um, you know, uh, I, I'm striving to be my authentic self. I just need to be authentic oh, yeah, in I've this moment. I need to be authentic in this moment. Yeah. Um, you know, I feel like in that particular moment, yes. I was not authentic. And, you know, I'm talking to this person and they don't, I got the feeling from them that they weren't authentic. And it's when I hear that, it's like, I've got this architecture around what something is meant yeah. to be. Right. And when that becomes something that's meant to be, then I'm always trying to reference when am I meeting that meant to be versus when I'm not, which creates a lot of tension <laughs> within oneself. <laughs> so what is authentic to you then? I think authenticity for me is perhaps the lighthouse, the North Star, the guiding light. And funny enough, even in that answer, it actually reflects what you said about it, just shifting and changing in one context to the next. That's why I came to this thought that authenticity is this same instance of you know subjective versus objective but i had a conversation with a friend only just yesterday and he is a very deep thinker he's a philosopher and he has these um what he calls these uh the drums you know the, the drums that are underneath the cultural fabric those sort of conversations that get to reach a surface and he had this conversation about the transjective so people always think about subjective objective right like you know mm. what's what's subjective to me how am i relate to yeah. that what's the objective um truth or or fact here yeah but the transjective is sort of accepting that everything keeps flowing back and forth and in any moment it is going to be subjective when i put it into the box in context when i explain it but as soon as i remove from the context and i'm thinking about it freely it's always shifting between the objective subjective and the magic that it creates out of nothing you know that intuition that spontaneous mm. um, aspect of life that and that's universal what, truth and that and that's that's flow yeah that is an aspect of what flow is that's right that those those, mm. those universal truths right that come out of nowhere it, it's even like um and i very very little but you know how they say about quantum physics how everything can be everything because it's a wave function but then when you look at it it becomes a particle and you can locate exactly where it yeah, is yeah. but as soon as you stop observing it it changes to be yeah. anything right and he says there's some some sort of relation to that and and funny enough i believe that that might actually be the case because every time i want to be um, authentic it's only relative to the situation that i'm in and perhaps even the state that i'm in at that time but authentic <laughs> is being the state that you're in yeah yeah i, I get that i what, get that whatever the state may be at the time yeah so that's why i feel like if um in the conversation that people bring to their understanding of their own authenticity is rather than boxing it into subjective and objective but maybe this new transjective meaning that it's always shifting and flowing and then it starts to flow. you get you get rid of that yeah like, i'm 
always trying to, like I told you, like, oh, I'm trying to be, or thing, I'm trying to be, I'm meant to be, what is this thing that just I'm meant be to be? But you talk about how, like, with your public speaking, mm. you just allow the channel to come through and you mm. speak and the what? certainty, mm. and it is what it is. And if yeah. I told you to write it down, even your thinking or your recalling of writing it down was not truly what was happening with you in the moment, right? Mm. So it's just, yeah. Uh, mm. It's interesting. Now I'm going to bring you guys back, only because we've got some more to talk about and just time. Um, I want to talk about giving, and, and actually this actually comes into what you're saying actually quite well, to give yourself the space to move and allow yourself to organically grow. Mm. So instead of having to be, or even as you were saying, like I need to be authentic or I wasn't authentic, to allow yourself just to be. Mm. How many people do that? Yeah. I I guess it's a it's a challenge that we all live with every single day. Yeah. Mm. So, I that's what I'm constantly working on, allowing yourself to be more being, less doing. <laughs> yeah, because that's that's the formula for manifestation. Be, mm. do, have. Mm. Mostly we're being in fear, doing in fear. I have I'm a photo of a slide you did that says that on there. Yeah, <laughs> and it's true. So I'm always trying to be more because that's when you're really in tune with your higher self yeah yeah that's true you get beautiful messages you're also talking about when we talked about different ways of getting through um different tips and takeaways of being able to write whoa sorry guys we've got dessert here what have we got we got my interpretation of a pavlova it's a peach and raspberry pavlova with pistachio cake Wow. And raspberry floss. You will have photos of this on my on my wow, page after this. Yeah. Actually, Thank actually, you. can you can you take that up to the camera? Yeah, and they show definitely that? have to see this. <laughs> and just tell them what it is again. Wow, you got to see this, guys. My interpretation of a uh, um, pavlova. It's a peach and raspberry pavlova with uh, pistachio cake and raspberry floss. Thank you, and you'll get photos afterwards as well. <laughs> oh, it's party on a plate. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No worries. Wow. Please enjoy. Thank you. We will. Thank you so thank much. You so much. Um, yeah, so you would um, <laughs> eat it any way you want to. How's that? Ooh, I, do, wow. I do have a question that I want to post to you. When, even when you're being fearful in a moment, right? Mm. And, and I know that there is a, a way to channel a different uh, version of yourself or a different truth or maybe it's opening up the antenna to a different truth that's positive. But when people are being fearful, I don't, can you actually be anything else in that moment? So is it inauthentic to be fearful? Can you repeat that again, sorry? Like when people are <laughs> fearful, right? And, and, or when you, when you do something that um, later you um, think was inauthentic or wasn't yeah. in line or congruent with yourself, I wonder, could you have been anything else in that moment? So isn't no. that authenticity in itself? Yes. Because, it's, because we're talking about not yes. putting away the negativity and, and the mm. shadow side of our yeah. personalities as, yes. a, as a bad thing. That's, that's why I came to this thinking about it all. It's like, well, I couldn't have been anything else because then I got a learning which allowed me to be something better the next time. And this is what I say that as, you know, not just as business owners and entrepreneurs, but as human beings, everything we go through is normal. Mm. Yeah. Mm. We go through... It, it, it's yeah it's totally normal because of that mm. and totally authentic yes yeah. definitely just, yeah, I mean, just... mm. guys this has been an eye this is an eye-opener conversation for us as well <laughs> we're learning yeah. we're learning lots too right. um you were also talking about you write to express yourself mm. as a as a form of um helping you get through it as well mm. all right because i'm a very emotional being and so I love to express and release my emotions. Um, and because I know the science behind it now, I know import how important it is to grieve. And I'm always growing, so I'm constantly going through a grief cycle as well. I just went through a big grief probably over these last three weeks um, because I went away for the three days. I studied metaphysics and we did a retreat. So I went in within, so, you know, so I, I pulled apart those parts of me that no longer serve. And so then I go through that process of death. And so I just had to be a lot and support myself and, you know, nurture myself through that. Um, yeah, which is, it's a beautiful thing. Um, and yesterday I felt all this anger come up and 
and I knew that that's like the last phase before you get into acceptance. And I was like, okay, let's do this. And so I just wrote crazily and just let all of the anger out. And then what happens is you start to feel good. And what came through for me was I realized I had a codependent relationship with finances, with money. I was letting money make me happy or sad. Mm. And so anger was beautiful because it gave me this beautiful gift at the end. And you got it out nicely by writing. Mm. And I'm, I'm going to say this. I reckon that's the most entrepreneurs, even the ones who understand themselves and say, you know, it's not about the money, that mm. codependency of how happy you are based on how successful you did and that. Mm. I think people need to have a little bit of awareness, myself mm. definitely included, that there is mm. this intense relationship no matter mm. what I say regarding why we need to do things. Yeah. No, I agree with that. Mm. I agree with that. Mm. Um, there's a, a book called The Artist's Way. I can't remember who it's by. And she says, and this works really well too, she says to write three pages, doesn't matter what it is. So if you're overthinking, and I, I say with overthinking, that if you're, if you're thinking of yesterday all the time, um, that keeps you in depression. Mm -hmm. If you're thinking of tomorrow all the time, that keeps you in anxiety. You need to breathe and bring yourself back here. Or another way to bring yourself back to the present is to listen for the white noise so I can hear if I can hear footsteps or I can hear breathing or I can hear like bring myself back as well mm. and these three pages thanks uh, chef Thomas um, these three pages are very much getting things out it's like a brain dump mm. um, thank you so much no this is just divine mm. um, it's, it's a brain dump of getting things out so you have to do three pages yeah and it doesn't matter if you write blah, 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 or you're swearing at it or whatever you're writing in it, it's just getting those three pages out. And once you've, and it's, it's about writing it and getting it out. And so once you've written the three pages, it's like, huh. The very first time, so you can do it in the morning, first thing before you do anything, have you have your coffee and do it, or at night before you go to bed, so you're not overthinking in bed. The very first time I did it, I went to have a shower. You know how you usually think in the shower? Mm, Nothing. Yeah. Really? Nothing. Beautiful. I stood there going, this is freaky. <laughs> really freaky. Because I had written the three pages. Yeah. But what she also said is that by continuing to do it on a daily, um, daily, you'll end up, um, people have like come up with new ideas and different things and because it ends up becoming something that's more creative as well mm -hmm. instead of just a brain dump. So it's amazing what it does, but it's a great writing way mm. just to get everything out here onto mm. paper. Mm. Oh, but there is one thing that if you're going to do it daily, then at the end of every week, shred it and never, ever, ever read it back because mm. all it is is a brain dump. So mm. never read it back. Mm. And you don't want something, God forbid, to happen to you and someone else reading them. So shred them. <laughs> get rid of them. <laughs> yes. Mm. Um, so um, what... Different steps that we can take without paralyzing ourselves. In terms of? In terms of when we start to feel fear. Mm. Well, I think you've got to find what works for you. Like some people, we've, I've had this conversation before with people, and for some people it's phone a friend, mm. um, express what's going on. Mm. Um, for me it's always, I've got to go straight in, I work on myself, what is this bringing up in me? So I think it's just finding... What do they say? You have those five five people in your life that you can just call and, and, and have a chat to. But I think it's so important to surround yourself with other entrepreneurs. Because they get it. They do. Like my beautiful friend, I've had her for you know, a long, long time. Um, and she's been an entrepreneur a lot longer than me. And she was, wrote this beautiful you know post in one of her Facebook groups about what you know everything that she was going through and how she was struggling and... And I just, I just said, you know, I said, do you want to chat? And she said, yeah, that would be great. And then I had a chat to her and she just said what she was going through. And I said, yeah, me too. <laughs> she was like, what? Really? I said, yeah. This is what you go through. You know, you go through these cycles. And she's like, thank you so much. That feels so good now. It was just to even know. Hey, people don't realise that we all go through stuff. Mm. We all go through stuff, guys. And it's really normal. But having someone mm. to banter with or talk about it with is, is great. Mm. Mm. And then you realise you're normal too. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and in that moment, I feel better now. Because we can, oh, we can, well, I know for me, I've, we can be our own worst enemies. 
We make it so wrong, we think spiral the left, right, well, further down. There's the saying, would you treat your best friend the way you treat yourself? <laughs> and most people go, no. <laughs> well then stop treating yourself that way. <laughs> enough is enough. Um, we talked about also uh, mental language and the way we talk about to ourselves with is exactly that. Mm. We need to start having better self-talk. And self-talk is good. There's nothing wrong with self-talk, but we need to have better mm. self-talk. Mm. Yeah. For me, um, the self-talk aspects... I definitely agree we need to have better self-talk. The question becomes, how do we get to the better self-talk or how do we um, change our state when we're in a mode of negative mm. self-talk, right? And uh, I know that uh, I've been showing this how I like exercise and physical challenge, but I really do believe that there is something fundamental about moving the body which affects the mind because we're symbiotic in our relationship. Even in science, and for a long period of time, there was a separation between you know the brain and your body and now we realize that even the biome in our gut affects our personality and that's why the food affects our personality a lot too. Mm. So I always tell people that it's not about aesthetics, right? Everyone thinks about if I go to the gym, like it's so easy to get really like um, buff and jacked anyway. Like they make it like it's like, I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to come out looking. <laughs> it does so many other like, amazing things. Yeah, it, but it does all these amazing things because when you're moving the body, the brain seems to change and you have a different conversation because of what you said about these little moments of completion. Mm. And when you have little moments of completion, when you have uncertainty in your life, which some, which usually um, in different ways causes a lot of depression and anxiety, whether it's uncertainty of self, uncertainty of environment, is that you can create little moments of certainty, mm. right? little moments of certainty. And I really do believe that those little moments of certainty, achievement, of um, pushing the body and getting that understanding of how your body works and making it healthy really is a foundation to changing that language. And then when you have that starting step point, by step process. Yeah, step by step process. But a lot of people don't do the physical part because it's hard. It's hard, we get busy, we're really tired, but I can't And you're normal, enough. I'm guilty of that too. Yeah, no, I'm, not, I'm guilty of that too. I go for, sometimes I go for long periods of time of not doing any training at all. Yeah, but I think your long, your long period of time, my long period of time, are ten different things. I think. <laughs> yeah, look, yeah, and look, it's all relative. But I, you know, I'll go through periods of time where I don't train and I'll smash KFC and donuts and all yeah. that. And just because yeah. I look fit, that doesn't mean that it's not affecting my brain. Yeah. It might not be affecting my physical mm. health, but it affects my brain because I'm tired. I get food coma. All these different things, right? Mm. And I, I just can't stress enough that. We're missing, I think it was maybe it was like Aristotle's time that said that those who do not understand their body actually do not understand the human experience. And I think that there is wow. an element of yeah, an element of that when we talk about self-talk, what generates the self-talk? Mm. How you feel at that intuitive gut level as well. And when you yeah. feel unhealthy, mm. when you wake up with mm. aches and pains and your neck is tight and your hips tight, you know, even from someone who simply sleeps all on the side all the time. Yeah, mm. you're all the way down here on the computer all the time. They're just little, like, pebbles that just keep getting thrown at you. Or what is that saying where, you know, water that drips on a rock, you know, over a century creates a mm. hole, whereas if you throw a splash of water on it, the same amount at one go, it doesn't do anything, right? Mm. But this little wearing away of individuals. And you would have seen in palliative care all the people. That's exactly what yeah. just came to mind. I used to work yeah. with um, all the people in medical research, 70 and over, and those who have like the worst posture, right? And they said they've got this pain and that, but they can't figure out why. They take all this medication, and it's this spiral that puts you. We talk about environment affecting how we view ourselves. Yeah. What about your own? So we really need to look after ourselves bit by bit. You know what we eat, what we what we exercise, what we think, what we talk to ourselves. Um, all of those who we spend our time with, all of those things matter to helping with depression and anxiety in business. Mm. So I'd actually say to our listeners here, no matter um, where you are at the fitness level or exercise doesn't level, matter. doesn't matter, go onto YouTube and search a five minute stretching video. And if you, um, you know, with that whole challenge yourself or doing something for yourself, if you did that every day for 30 days, a mm. five to 10 minute stretching oh. video, it will change your life. It will absolutely change your life. You you not imagine what having flexibility can do and it actually doesn't matter what size you are. Mm. The flexibility will come if you go through the motions of just pushing your bodies in different moments and you'll feel different. And 
when we talk about self-talk, I guarantee you it changes the game. It really does. I think the key in self-talk though, I had a business with clients today, is to, the powerful thing is notice the not loving thoughts that come in. Yeah, the negative. Because as soon as you're aware of it, you can change it. You can change it. So she said, "Oh my God, I'm becoming so so aware of all these negative thoughts." Said that's fantastic, Mm -hmm. because before they were just going around under the surface, draining your energy. When we're aware of stuff, that's whatever it may be. That's Uh when we can start to change it. When I was aware I was going through post traumatic shock, I could research it and change it. Mm -hmm. So, and as you said too, and you said too that once you were aware of things you were able to look at ways of changing it as well. Um, One of the last points I want to have a look at is collaboration and giving back. How does that help with depression and anxiety? Well, for me, um, contribution and and collaboration was actually a big part of my journey because the first iteration of my business, which was, you know, the business pitching and all that, I had a really successful year at the end of 2016. Even on my Instagram, I had a photo of myself toasting myself in beer, you know, running 12... 12 months of consecutive workshops, mm-hmm. well done and all that. But I fell out of love with my business and I couldn't understand why. I went on soul searching and I realized contribution was missing from my life. Mm-hmm. That despite the success, it was the giving back that was missing mm-hmm. from my life because there is there is the joy and pleasure and the dopamine hit you get from self-achievement, but there is this other level that is, I guess, what love is, right? The, the highest level of love when you can inspire and touch somebody else and when you do that for somebody else, it's impossible to remain in that state, even if it's just for the briefest moment, but you just stack those moments by doing more and giving more and, and adding more. So, it makes a huge yeah. difference of how people feel when they make a difference for other people. Mm. Well, it does for us anyway. Yeah. And you get Very out of your true. way for a while. Yeah. Those negative thoughts, it's beliefs, all about, they're not there. It's all about someone else. It's not about, it's mm. not about us. And you know, it, it's funny, selfishly, we, 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 we love, Feeling that um, enjoyment of doing it. I think I it's very. I think I'm very selfish. Yeah, it's, that's it's why objective. I love contributing. It needs to be. <laughs> it makes me feel because I love other people feeling good. So it's a yeah. deal. I think it's actually a built-in mechanism because if you didn't feel so good, why would you continue to do it? It's like we were designed that the more you give, the happier you feel. True, yeah. true, <laughs> true, yeah. true. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, now, guys, I want to let you know again that none of us, the three of us, are not medical professionals. Um, so if this does bring up anything for you, please uh, seek medical advice or you can call Lifeline on 13 11 14 or if you are from outside of Australia, you can Google Lifeline or an equivalent or also seek medical advice as well. Now, I just want to find out, Lisa, do we have any questions? Uh, more comments. More comments? Yeah. I'll have a quick look. Any questions at all? Excuse me, guys. No. Cool, we covered it well. <laughs> Thank you. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, how nice is this? If you can I think it's Perrin says, Thank you for sharing and being vulnerable. You know what? I think the three of us really believe that if it makes a difference for other people, we're happy to do it, as scary as it is for the three of us as well. Mm. Very much so. It saves lives. That's true. Look, I uh, never thought of it that way, but wow, yeah. It does save lives. Wow. And, and I want to give one moment of true vulnerability because I, like, you know how you said about recognizing that we all go through it all. So in this whole tumultuous past three months, there was a moment, um, actually it was on Are You OK Day in September mm. because I looked in the mirror and I asked myself that question rather than dismissing it. And I didn't recognize the person looking back at me. Mm. and. I'm going to say this, even this, despite that my, my family might actually see this. For the briefest of moments, I contemplated suicide mm. for half a second. Mm. And there's half lots of second. people that do. Half a second. That's all, what, it, was just, it was just a briefest moment, right? Remember, mm. this, the context I'm coming from is that I've never had any of this in, in my uh, life growing up. And of course, you know, that just removed and you know, everything that I had probably came back to me. Mm. But to get to a, a point where you're looking over the cliff's edge and making a judgment on yourself saying, oh, but there's, there's people who've got it so much worse than me and all that, that's not useful at all because we have this shared human experience where relative to whatever we present, in front, it, it's really meaningful to us. Mm. So when we talked about having um, really great people, like, you know, the five people that you mentioned and being able to call them and talk to them, that is what will save you. 
what won't save you is if you try to keep holding that weight by yourself and try to carry it on your shoulders. Mm. So you really need to share. You really need you to need speak to. to someone, whether it's a friend, whether it's mm. um, whether it's a colleague, whether it's a medical professional, whoever it may be. You need to share that with someone. It's really, really important. So yeah. important. Thank you. I, yeah, I love it. Thank and, you. And maybe, and maybe when um, you meet your um, business colleagues, you understand where you're coming from. When they ask you, you know, how you've been, you don't just lie and say fine. Maybe you do just continually share with everyone. I, I tried that and it, and it worked really well because it got conversations happening that made me think about things differently, which led me out of that mm. dark hole. It was the darkest hole that I've ever been in, in, in my life. Yeah. We're actually sitting here, I think, because you and I had that conversation. Mm. And if you wouldn't have, if you wouldn't have had that conversation with me, I wouldn't have thought of doing this. So thank you for being vulnerable. <laughs> thank you. Um, I just want to share here too. Yvonne says uh, it is one of the traps, and I hope I read this uh, this fine. Um, it is one of the traps entrepreneurs fall into: learning to try to teach others before they embodied something for themselves. As a psychotherapist, what I know is that as practitioners, we can't take others where they haven't been. So if you can't embody the skills, you are only ever speaking from a, a cognitive understanding. Um, so, oh, and there's, well, uh, there is a misunderstanding in the entrepreneurial space that ego is no good, but being egotistical, e egotistical is the problem. Um, just in regards to, yeah, we, we, we do tend to help other people and we do tend to do stuff for other people, but guys, you really need to take a step back and do for yourself and be for yourself and spend some time for yourself and learn to love yourself. Um, and then it's going to be so much easier with other people too, mm. which is really important. Mm. Um, just want to, sorry, track sheet over here, guys. Does anyone want to add anything else? Um, we've, we've gone through quite a lot today of what, what uh, depression, anxiety uh, about it, our stories. Mm -hmm. uh, there's quite a few tips there as well and different takeaways that people can do. Mm -hmm. And I think one of my biggest things is to say to you, you're normal. Everything you go through is normal. So stop being so hard on yourself and just take a step back for a moment too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, get support, have support. Have you, I've got support. a massive support group. It's huge. That's really important too. Yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to let you guys know as well um, that recently I've been doing a lot of uh, learning a lot about this is a bit out of the blue but it's kind of not um, I've been learning a lot in regards to Himalayan salt lamps and I'm amazed at all the benefits that they actually have including helping with depression and anxiety because uh, they help to balance the chemicals in your body I've been learning lots about this stuff <laughs> struck a deal for you guys um, with the absolutely beautiful Jan and Zoe from Forever Exotic. Um, they have the most exceptionally high quality uh, Himalayan salt lamps and gemstones and uh, crystals and other things as well. So please, please, um, if you give them a call and you mention business dining with Deb, you'll receive 20% off all their beautiful Himalayan salt lamps, Himalayan salt soap. Uh, Himalayan inhalers and anything else you decide to get from their store as well. And their website details are foreverexotic.com.au. And you know Jan and Zoe. Yeah. Yeah, you have done. I've got one of their lamps at home. Oh, do you? <laughs> <laughs> their lamps are absolutely gorgeous. I walked into their warehouse and it was all lit up mm. with all lamps. It was like, wow. But the moment you walk in, you feel serene. <laughs> it was lovely. So yeah, you get 20% of everything there, guys. So give Jan and Zoe a call. Mention Business Dining with Deb and you'll receive that. Um, I want to give a big, big thank you to my friend Melanie Taylor, Success Mentor, and to Eric Cham, Communication Strategist. Uh, how can people get in touch with you guys? Um, probably Facebook. <laughs> uh, Melanie with an O, Taylor. You can message me. Uh, or a, or my website, um, probably email me, melanie at successonpurpose.net.au. Great. Eric? Yeah, for me, Facebook as well, or LinkedIn. Mm. Yeah, those are the two areas. Facebook and LinkedIn? Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. And I want to thank uh, my friend Lisa for helping the back end and uh, helping you. write that sounds weird, but <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. 
and helping with all the Facebook stuff and all the comments and questions. We had none, which was fantastic. So you guys did really, really well. And hopefully we answered a lot of questions whilst we were going through this as well. And I want to thank our sponsor, Chef Thomas yeah, yeah. Dam. Thank you so much. And no, you can't have my plate. No worries. Um, that's okay. <laughs> I'll give you some time. You're not taking that. Um, Chef Thomas Dam is from Dam Good, which everything definitely is. And it's D A M M G O D dot com dot A U. And he is here in Melbourne. However, he travels around Australia and travels the world as well. So whether you're wanting to surprise your partner with a beautiful dinner, um, or you're wanting an exclusive event or for family, or you're wanting something huge or anything in between, Chef Thomas is definitely your man. He'll give you a beautiful dining experience like we've had tonight mm -hmm. as well. Um, now, I just want to let you know, my name's Debbie Small. I'm the founder of Empowerment Point, And I really want to thank you for watching Business Dining with Deb, Business Treats and Takeaways. Uh, you can watch my episodes on YouTube, which is, I've just started a new YouTube channel. So it's Empowerment Point TV. You can find me there. And if you'd like to have a chat with me about anything to do with your business as well, uh, please message me on Facebook or you can uh, email me at hello at empowermentpoint.com. And remember, in life and in business, you need persistence and a great sense of humour. So keep <laughs> moving forward. Thanks, guys. See you later. Bye. Bye.